All right, all right. Good afternoon. Good evening, everyone. You're tuned in to Holler to Success Scholar. I am the Success Scholar, Haki Shakur Ami. Here, thank you all for tuning in, listening in. Here, each and every Monday at elifemedia.net. We're here at Everlasting Life in Capitol Heights, Maryland. And yes, uh, man, I just want to thank everybody for continuing to support. Got a lot of progressive, positive things going on here at eLife. Uh, you know, last week, well, this weekend, actually, Professor Griff was in town. I didn't get a chance to make any of that, but, you know, definitely want to shout out, keep the energy going, and, uh, you know, just want to say thank the brother for coming back into town. And so and I want to thank Dr. Latif Tariq here. Last week we had a one-hour discussion around uh, the Malcolm X birthday, uh, Dr. Latif Tariq, and you can check that out, that whole one-hour interview on uh, YouTube, uh, where if you Google his name and my name together, it should pop up or go to eLife Media. And I have, well, before I, you know, let me just make some announcements before I get into that. Of course, this coming, and I'll mention this again, this coming Saturday, we will have uh, Brother Roland R Grimes uh, traveling, thank you, uh, the traveling talk show live with musical guest Greg Boyer. And that will be at the Black Box Theater. The Black Box Theater tickets are just $25, so support that. I will be present, 4185 Indian Head Highway in Indian Head, Maryland. All right, so definitely check that out this Saturday, May the 13th, 4 p.m. And I have, of course, in the studio, and I have a guest in the studio and a guest on a line. Uh, this brother, he has been uh, doing some theater work. And so this conversation, we're going to talk about, you know, just, just actor, you know, just, just the, the, the industry as well as performing art, shall I say. But I have... First, you know, in the studio, Brother Derek Johnson. Yes, sir. Uh, greetings and welcome, greetings, brother. Sir. Thanks Peace. for having me. Uh, thank you, thank you. And he has a play coming up here, uh, and we'll talk about that. A Malcolm X. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So they can see your face. <laughs> well, uh, Malcolm X, a, a, a an American legend, and on the line from well. Uh, let me see where she may be, but let me. Springfield, <laughs> you in Springfield too? Okay, okay. Everybody's yeah. from Springfield. Okay, all right. So, I have on the line with us, uh, uh, Sister uh, Danielle Ward. Uh, welcome, welcome. Hi, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me on. Okay, great, great, great. Now, are you on? A, are you on a speakerphone or a hotline? I have. I have a headset on. Should I go ahead and take it out? Uh, let's see how it sounds. I'll, I'll, I'll yeah, he, he said he'll adjust it. Uh, but, yeah, so okay. uh, definitely, definitely, I appreciate you joining me here. We've been trying to say we're going to set this up, and I couldn't pick a per more perfect opportunity uh, to have a brother that's going to be doing an amazing play. So you can say um, good evening to my guest in the studio, Brother Derek. Greetings, sister. How are you doing? I'm great. Okay. Great. I'm right. glad to be on, and nice to meet you. All right, likewise. All right, all right. So both of you are... You know, actors, and uh, I'm, I'm gonna leave with Danielle first and just okay. ask her Ladies one question. First. I mean, we'll mm -hmm. go, yeah, <laughs> right, yeah, right, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> <laughs> so, that, that, that's some good points, but um, uh, yeah, so Danielle, she, I, I, I met her through uh, one of her latest films, she's been in three films totally. Well, three of this particular uh, film, uh, genre of films, but her first, she started with This Life Ain't Easy, yeah. right. Ain't pretty. This life ain't oh, pretty. Okay, yeah, this, yeah, how to mix that up? Yeah, so this life ain't pretty. Yep. Oh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So now, first, let's let's go back. So, what made you get into, you know, performing arts and acting? Well, I tell you what. When I was a little girl, I used to watch like I Dream a Genie and Wonder Woman novel shows, and I would just go to my room and act all that stuff out. You know, using my imagination and everything like that. Okay. So when I got older, like it was always in my mind. But at the time when I was a little girl, I didn't realize that it was actual, actually achievable, that it was act I could actually see myself on the television or the big screen. So um, fast forward to, you know, when I'm a teenager, 
I so bad wanted to do like the school plays, but at the time I was so self conscious because like my teeth were jacked up, like I needed braces and everything. Mm-hmm. So I had some uh, self esteem issues. Mm-hmm. So fast forward to like my mid twenties, I got that taken care of. I went and got braces and everything, and so I can't stop smiling after that. But it was after that point that I started uh, dabbling, you know, plays here, like church productions, things like that. And in 2009, I saw a casting call in one of our local papers Hmm. for This Life Ain't Pretty, and I was like, you know what, I can do that. So I went and auditioned and got it almost immediately. And so that just kind of got the ball rolling. Wow, wow. So tell tell us a little bit about that. So now, this was was what was considered a short film, correct? And uh, a short... And yes, it won it, the Cam Williams short film top five films. Was that a particular year or what was that? In 2009, yes. Okay, yes. okay, okay, great, great, great. Wow, so that really kind of was your first on film experience, shall I say, correct? Yes, and I was terrified and exhilarated all at the same time. Okay, <laughs> okay. So well, yeah. right, well, let me let me uh, just you know we gonna go back and forth if you got a little little time to hang out with us here. Okay. So, but I have brother Derek J- uh, John Johnson. Johnson. Right. right, right, right. Yeah, my family name's Johnson. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, so but you have something coming up here in May, yes. May the twentieth here at Everlasting right. Life, which is uh, we honor uh, the birthday of Malcolm X, and that's gonna be uh, his birthday is actually on the nineteenth, but. Right. But by any means, edutainment, edutainment presents a Malcolm X and American legend with a question and answer uh, after the performance. Now, is this a, a solo one man? Yeah, this is a one man. Uh, production. A one man yes. uh, production. Okay, Danielle, have you done any one man for one, one woman man productions show. yet? <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. But okay, it's on my all right. Well, well, we gonna work work that. But let me let me first let, let me shout out Kim Connor, Kimberly Connor, yeah. who who. Um, Actually, who I met Danielle from, she's a director of several yeah. films, and uh, she's been doing an amazing job. And she's going to Vegas, as she's been posting. Yes. So let me give Kim a, a shout out. She's been on here several times. So, so let me ask you, brother Dark, where did you get started uh, with with uh, acting? Well, it was a little different for me. Um, I used to be a prize fighter, but I was always oh, a very okay. closely aware young man. Okay, and okay. so. I was moved by Ali. I mean, oh, really? I, Ali the fighter, <laughs> but also Ali the activist. Yes. You know, yes, and that's yes, what yes, really, really moved me. Okay. And so that was one of the inspirations that got me boxing, even though I was wow. a young man who got into fights all the time. And, mm-hmm. and I got the a joy of boxing. And my mother used to always tell me, uh, God didn't bless you to get knocked upside the head in no boxing ring. You have a tremendous creative talent. Mm. But I never followed my creativity. I used to always sit in my room and, like the sister said, use your imagination. Mm. I used to draw and things of that nature, but I never mm-hmm. really pursued the arts. Okay. And my boxing career uh, ended probably in, uh, ended, ended around 1995, 96. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and I was still... What, what was your weight class? I was or? a welterweight. Okay, I was, okay. Uh, I, I fought amateur and professional. I, okay. I, I was all Marine Corps boxer in 1988. Uh-huh. I made it to the Olympic trials, but, you know... Uh-huh. You can't be in the streets and be a fighter and be successful. <laughs> so I, my, I was my worst enemy. Yeah. You know, so, uh, yes, but, but, but I was always one of those persons uh, trying to make a difference in the community. I've mm-hmm. been involved in a lot of different things. And, uh, right. So I began to write when my boxing career ended. And mm-hmm. one day I began to write. I wrote something about the use of the N-word in our community. Wow. And somebody told me about an open mic. And I went out there, spit my piece, and everybody was like, whoa, got off stage and... Somebody said, I don't know about you, but after that brother there, I'm ready to go march. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and so I started with poetry. Then I, I, I saw, uh, and I, I, I've been a student of Malcolm probably since uh, uh, 1981 or so. Mm-hmm. And, um, and so um, I saw a audition for a play called The Meeting. And okay, so I went okay. out and auditioned. It's a play about what would happen had Malcolm and Martin joined forces. I think I'm going to see that tomorrow. Okay. Well, it's, it's been out for a while. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. And, All right. And, uh, yeah, yeah very, very, I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it Very powerful play. Wow. I got it. It's, it's wow. very powerful. Okay. And uh, so I auditioned, got the role. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, and I had been doing that for, I was doing that for a while, uh, maybe two or three years. And then one night we were performing, um, I think, in District Heights. And the guy played Martin. You know, we had a few disagreements off stage, on stage, we were great. Okay. And so he didn't show up. 
Okay. And so okay. this particular night, I had a lot of people come to the show. Wow. And I got out there and I did his line and I did my line. Wow. And out out of that, uh, uh, I just wrote me a one man show. Like in, this mm. was in around this was around twenty. 11 something like that mm -hmm. and then fast forward to 2013 I, I was continuing to do the meeting then in 2013 someone called me from seeing some stuff i had on youtube i used to do these small little skits of malcolm uh -huh. uh, and they said you have one man show a festival and it's about bringing history out of books mm. and i got invited to south carolina you know it was mostly white audiences so my <laughs> first question was how are they going to receive malcolm wow. i went down there and tore that thing up wow. and i mean <laughs> I, I sold out eight shows and i mean it was just amazing and mm. so i wrote the the piece about three months prior to, to going down there, it went well. I got back home and, and just began to continue to do it. And so I've been really on this, pushing, pushing it, really trying to get it out there. And, I, and I, I've gotten uh, pretty good reviews from it wow. and still just uh, really, really doing it. And, um, uh, I got a chance to meet Malcolm's uh, Ilyasha, Malcolm's daughter, Ilyasha. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And she's seen, me, she's seen me a couple times. She hasn't right. seen this production, but she's okay. seen me and she mm -hmm. knows of me. And so right. I'm really, and I'm really trying to get it out there because I feel good about this wow. piece, and I don't think Malcolm is someone who gets enough who gets enough recognition that he mm -hmm. deserves. Wow. Yeah. And, and one of the reasons I, I do this, I have been doing this every year for the birthday mm -hmm. because I believe he deserves the same uh, recognition as his contemporary, Dr. Uh, Martin Luther King. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Yes, which sir. he doesn't get. Wow. Wow. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Yeah. So definitely, definitely looking forward to this. So that this is coming up here Saturday, next Saturday. Not this one coming up, but May the 20th, 7 to 10 p.m. Mm -hmm. here uh, at Everlasting Life, 9185 Central Avenue uh, in Capitol Heights, Maryland. And admission is $20 and 15 for students with ID. Uh, and I'm going to give out his contact information, Brother Doug Johnson, 202-427-2414. Uh, or... D E D A R I C Johnson 63 at Gmail. Let me say that one more time. D A R I C Johnson 63 at Gmail. Great, great, great. And may I also mention uh, I'm a playwright as well, so I've written three okay. plays. So I've you, written, so I've you, written three plays. okay, okay, yeah. great. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. N well, mention some of those plays. Okay, some, I, some I, I've, I've written a, a play called "In the Name of Love." Uh, In which the name really, of love. Yeah, okay. and actually, this play was motivated by um, I proposed to my my wife uh -huh. in the play because my my first wife, and I'm not trying to put her down anything. <laughs> she was one of those strong, independent, modern women, and at that time, I was uh -huh. I was a fighter. Roland, what you know about that? <laughs> <and> smart. Oh. <laughs> Wasn't making yeah, much. <laughs> Go ahead. Wasn't okay. much, making much money as a fighter and a right. bartender, so she went out and bought her own ring, and I, I was disappointed, <laughs> but I went through with it anyway. Okay. okay. And so uh, that relationship didn't work out. Mm. I got two two kids by that, which I'm very proud of. Two mm -hmm. uh, well-rounded adult, uh, adult women who I'm very very proud of. So I so when that marriage didn't work out, I said I want to do something unique and special if I ever get married again. Mm. And so I just wrote this piece about what we all go through in, in trying to find love. I mean, loving mm. yourself, yeah. uh, losing love, and all these different things. I, 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 I gathered together a lot of poets, and we told various stories mm. about these aspects of love. And at the end, I uh, dropped one name and proposed to my, my current wife. So that's uh -huh. my first play, and, I, and I've rewritten it. Of course, I'm married right now, so I've re rewritten it, really, which really speaks to us loving ourselves and mm. showing more love for the community and, mm -hmm. and how love is a powerful, powerful piece that we must not... Uh, uh -huh. Dismiss, wow. you know, and uh, and my other play is same goal, different view. Love is revolutionary. So it's about a clash between the uh, Black Power movement and the Civil Rights movement. Mm. It's a very very powerful piece that I really that's what I'm really starting to work on again when I finish uh, this one man show of, of uh, Malcolm because all my cast members have been asking me, sir, when are we going to do uh, your other plays again? Because I got a lot of the same my my theater group is by any means edutainment right. and so I have a, I have a, a lot of folks that I've been working with for a while wow. and they've been asking me for a while uh, you've been doing this Malcolm thing for quite a while and I say uh -huh. well you know it's me really uh, toning it and getting it what I really wanted because I because one man shows are, are very unique right, right, you know they right, are right. you know okay. and, it, and it takes a lot lot to work to really um, mm. to be effective just think about it you have to engage an audience yeah. by yourself by for, yourself right by, this show is like 45 minutes <laughs> wow wow you know, so, okay. uh, so okay. it takes a lot Yes, 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 yes. yes. So I'm proud of it, though. Wow. I'm very proud of it. So, Danielle. Yes, sir. Did you hear that? Now, what's that play, Dan? What's that play? 
Which one? The, the first the, one. Your first one. In the name of love. In the name of love, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm laughing uh, because and we, we're going to talk about uh, uh, before I do. Uh, that's where I know Danielle from. She oh, okay. played a she played a quite a unique character. We'll, we'll talk. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. <laughs> we'll talk about that. Uh, but but um, but you also played in a film with uh, 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 Donnie Gl- uh, not Donnie, T- Mr. Glover, Danny Glover. Yes, Danny, Danny Glover. <laughs> now, yes, what, what, Talk about that. Talk about that film. Okay. It, it, I had a very small heart, but okay. it was so, uh, very, it was affirming for me at the time. And I shot it um, probably a few months before we filmed Before I Do, but uh, Mr. Lister Productions was coming here because the film was based, it's about GMOs. So they needed, you know, good old Midwest cornfields and things like that. So I sent, they were they did a, an open casting call in the Champaign, Illinois paper, and I just I submitted my reel, you know, my headshot and all that, and they called, and I was like, oh, my gosh. And you know what? It, I only had three lines, but I tell you what, it, it, it's, it's probably the biggest, uh, you know, one of the more bigger budget films that I've done. Mm, but okay. I learned a lot, yes. you know, being able to see – all these people on set and just kind of see how everything works. Mm-hmm. And it was just very affirming. It was just very affirming. Now, no, I'm sorry. What, what's the name of that again? Did you? Oh, I'm sorry. It's called Consume. Consume. Okay, I got it right here. It's Consume. Consume. It had been on Netflix. I'm not sure if it's still on there, but okay. it should be available streaming. Consume. Um, and yeah, that deals yep. with, uh, you know, you with said, GMOs and how people, um, there's so many people with food allergies mm-hmm. now. And it goes into, you know, the scientific reasons why a lot of the foods that we eat are killing us, mm. you know, or making us sick. Wow. So, yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 Well, maybe so Dr. Was, Baruch may have it here. Go, sorry, ahead. go ahead. Go <laughs> ahead. <laughs> no, I was going to say, in this film, I was the police office receptionist, and I tell you, I had three lines, <laughs> and I killed those three lines, right? And okay. so the director was like, Danielle, I really like what you're doing, and, you know, he was just challenging me, you know, throwing other things at me, and which was really a different experience. When, when you say uh, he was throwing other things at you, you mean like re- making recommendations about the future, he, or? He's like, hey, this time I want you to do this, or this time you're going to, you know, act like you're on the phone and do this, and we're going to throw some other guys in the scene with you, and you're going to talk to them, and things that weren't in the, in the original script. Okay, okay, okay. So, yeah, yeah. So all you did, you you had your reel now, so and your um, your headshot. My headshot, my reel, and my resume. Yes. Okay. Yep. Okay. So mm-hmm. and that and that was it, right? They, they, that was it. Okay. Yes. Okay. <laughs> all right. Wow. 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 That's that's really great. So, um, and and how you now when you say the production, how big of a production was that? I mean, I'm not, if you know or. When you say a bigger budgeted, what, what's a big budget to you? I mean, or or in general? Well, and this is going to sound like I, I don't know how much the budget was, but they did have other, uh, you know, named actors in the film. Okay. But this film allowed me to get my SAG card. Okay. Yeah, that's that's one of the questions I wanted to ask. Yes. You. So, Mm-hmm. Explain what a SAG card is and how do you get it? <laughs> the SAG card? Right. Well, there's a few different ways to get it. I got on. When you fill out the contract and sign your life away, there's, there's a sheet called, it's called Taft Hartley. So, basically, there's all these questions, you know, for them to fill out, basically asking them, you know, why you didn't use a union actor already for this role. So Right. Mm-hmm. So it's all that. So I had that. So after um, we wrapped and they sent me my paycheck, <laughs> I called the SAG office. Because at this point, I'm thinking this was my one, two, three, four, fifth film, I think, at, the, at that point that I had done. Um, but, you know, there, there's a fee, of course, uh, for joining SAG. But once I had that, you know, those do, the initial dues together, you know, I sent in my check stub and everything, and they sent me my SAG card. So it really did, you know, help my career at that point. Mm. 
Wow. Yep. Wow. So, I mean, I know it's, it's dealing with the union and, you know, when certain productions come to an area, generally speaking, they want to get the union people first, right? Yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. All right. Sounds good. Sounds good. So, and then you came the most, the more recent production that you did with our friend Kimberly Connor. Uh, yes. with uh, Omar Gooding and Jensen Atwood in Before I Do. So, explain, yes. so, so just open up in terms of how that connection happened and uh, in your role. Well, this is the third, this is Kim's third film and also, because I've been in all three of her films. Right. But I still had auditions mm-hmm. for this one and I was so nervous because she, <laughs> you know, she auditions people in Chicago, uh, and all over, so wow. I didn't feel like I was a shoe in, you know what I mean? I felt like I had to work, which was fine. Uh, so I auditioned um, for her and a couple of the producers and everything, and then she offered me the role of Imani Ambrose, who is the female lead in this film. And without giving too much away, uh, Imani is she's a flight attendant, but she's also a poet. But she's one of those people that uh, I would call her a procrastinator because she, she's artistic, but she's not confident enough to, to go ahead with it, you know, to write that book and things like that. Right. Um, but I feel like this film is about taking risks, following your passion, mm-hmm. and asking people if you're content with a mediocre life, mm-hmm. you know. Are you content with just existing, going to work day to day, mm-hmm. paying bills, or are you going to take some risk to right. to do something that makes you feel alive? <laughs> right, right, absolutely, absolutely, yeah. So, brother, you want to add on to to anything you heard, or no? I'm just listening. Of, I mean, yeah. <laughs> she hit it right on the point, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, so well, well, let me go to Brother Dark. In terms of some of the, your responses, like. You, instant. Uh, I just I saw a play at Bowie uh, State maybe about three months ago. It was called uh, Betty Shabazz versus the Nation. Oh wow! Check check that out, brother. Yeah, check that, that out. Um, uh, it, it's it was a company up in New York, and I've been connected to the uh, professor of performing arts at Coppin State University. Okay. Like every time they do. Uh, uh, a uh, a play, uh, they'll have you know like people moderating. Well, you know okay. to to moderate the talk back okay. after, you know. And and this was well the first play that I moderated at Coppin was uh, it was after the 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 riots in Baltimore. Okay. So uh, so, so someone created a play dealing with with uh, you know the violence okay. and, and that. Okay. So. Um, but yeah, so that, that's that was just interesting. That this um, Betty versus Malcolm X. It sounds uh, like it. A play. I mean, that, that's the beauty about about the arts. You know, writing plays. I mean, because that's a lot of my plays are centered around issues that that we deal with every mm-hmm. day. I mean, I mm-hmm. try to make mine very conscientious. To make, I always tell people I want to challenge and stimulate your mind. Right, you know, right, and that's why right, entertainment right. is all about using the creative arts as a means to educate and entertain. Mm-hmm. And so that's what it's all always been about for me. Right. You know, right. and that's the beauty about the arts. You can really tell a lot of stories. I mean, I work for yes. the federal government, okay. and we do this talent showcase every year. <laughs> and in my in my little slick way, I use my my arts to, to say some things. If you look <laughs> below the surface, right. you're like, wow, you know, you know, yeah. a, lot of, a lot of the brothers and sisters are like, wow, mm-hmm. they call me brother Malcolm. Wow, brother Malcolm, you, <laughs> you gotta watch that, man. <laughs> I want you to lose your clearance. <laughs> But you know, I got to be me. <laughs> right, right. Yes, yes, yes. So, Ishtin, just just going thinking about about that in terms of, you know, the perception. And Danielle, you, I'm gonna ask both of you this question: uh, What do you see, for instance, in in terms of uh, some of these different roles that, um, uh, what's the term? Like how? Well, let me just give this example. I was talking to I, I, I was talking to this uh, young brother that he's going to be in the Tupac film mm-hmm. that's coming out. All eyes on me. I know right. Danielle going to see it, right? That's right, I am. 
So uh, I like him though. The, say again, the brother who's playing too. I know he like does. He so does. Like I, yeah, he does <laughs> look like him, right? Right. Um, so, but he, but he, and I'm, I'm gonna get him on here. Uh, he had a small part in the film, but he was explaining how sometimes. You know, when you play a certain type of role, and maybe Danielle, you can, you know, kind of fill this in in terms of, like, he's now like he played one role like in the prison, and and he was in the wire too, and he was shooting craps in the wire, and he said that I did an episode of the wire too. Oh, you did? Yeah, I did. Oh wow! Okay. I was just an extra. I didn't. I was okay. just an extra, but I did, okay. did an episode. All right, well, this guy he won the crap craps game, so yeah, okay. he get to to say he won the craps game, but um. He, he, I talked to him like a couple of days ago, like last week, and he said, man, they keep trying to give me these jail roles. Right. <laughs> and, you know, Danielle, and I don't know, like in terms of, you know, have you really s- said that you only going to do like certain things? You, you know, you, you're you going to try to stay within a particular uh, character in a sense. You know what? I know what I really don't want to play. Mm-hmm. I don't want to mess with any buffoon or any kind of role or uh, anything that's going to continue the uh, negative stereotypes of black people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I want to do roles where anybody can, can look at that role, you know, regardless if you're black, white, or whatever, and see themselves or their family members. Uh, but I just want to, I want to, to play characters that... Um, that are positive, but also challenging, you know, it doesn't have to be a goody goody role. Mm-hmm. Uh, the stuff that, that shows my range, but I definitely do not want to contribute to negative stereotypes. That's one thing I do not want to do. And I feel like I've been fortunate so far that I uh, haven't been offered anything like that. Right. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it, brother, uh, brother Derek, um, with your, your plays, I mean, so are you, seeing them, just keeping them as plays, or would you be interested in, like, having them, you know, take Yeah, I would on, be. On I would be. Like I said, I'm fairly new in this game. Cause okay. Because like I, I just started um, right. writing and, and acting, really, in 2000. Okay, you know, okay, I'm still, okay. You know, I, I feel good about where I am. Right, know, right, right. It was just like I just did it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Just yeah. jumped out right, there and did right, it because, right. uh, but, but being a fighter, you know, it's, I went from, the boxing ring stage to yeah. a performance stage. So it wasn't that, that much of a challenge. <laughs> right, I just right. don't uh, stand the risk of getting hurt <laughs> <laughs> on stage. But, right. you know, it, it, it's exciting. So um, kind of like the sister said, I, I like I said, I've only I've done a video before I did a extra in The Wire. Mm-hmm. I've been putting my headshots out uh, okay. trying to get roles, but I haven't really got any, got any as right, of yet. Right, right. So, um, um, but I'm like her. I, I can't do things that, that play to... Uh, the stereotypes <laughs> and of all the stuff that we see, we see enough of. I'll say right, it that way, right, right. You know, so uh, but but you know, I'm just putting myself out there. You know, and so right, right now, in the, in the meantime, I feel good about the plays I've written and just trying to mm. get someone see what see it and like it and maybe invest in the, in the things mm-hmm. that I'm doing. And that's mm-hmm. what my goal is right now is to find someone who's really willing to invest invest in it. Right. Because right. sadly, I believe this when it comes to things of of, of conscious, we don't get as much. Uh, positive feedback as right. we would like. Absolutely. Whereas Absolutely. if I did something uh, degrading women and things of that nature, mm-hmm. I would probably get uh, packed Academy houses. Award. Uh, yeah, the Academy <laughs> Award, right, exactly. So it's a challenge. It right. can be very challenging right. because I, right. so many times I look out there on stage and put my heart and soul in what I do mm-hmm. and look out there and see 10 people, mm-hmm. you know, but I but the show must go on. And, gonna, you know, and I've been doing this, yeah, like I said, since... Uh, the early 2000s, but, you know, I'm 54 years old, <laughs> so sometimes I I question how long should I, do I want to do this? Right, right. You know, that's a real good point. That's uh, Roland speaking, uh, da, uh, Danielle. Uh, hi, Danielle. This is Roland Grimes. I'm uh, hi. Co- uh, engineering, helping my man through the uh, through the maze of uh, online internet media, <laughs> and uh, my pleasure. I really enjoyed the, the conversation. And I wanted to pose to both of you, actually, a question, if I would. I don't have to call in because I'm here. Okay. <laughs> and one of the things you mentioned is when you do it, there's 10 people out there. And, uh, and I, may, I, may, I may be like some people experiencing that same thing mm-hmm. uh, with some of the things that when you create it. Right. right? Uh, you don't have the institution or 
you don't have the institutional buy-in or tie-in. Right. Um, you're really coming from an independent perspective. Yeah, no question. And what happens is first, you have to deal with yourself after that. And then second of all, um, you're now going to get the naysayers around you um, saying, oh, man, this isn't going to work. Right. And then, of course, the third thing is now you have to generate uh, enthusiasm to go out and keep doing it and keep yeah. doing it yeah. until you pass that bar. Yeah. And then the fourth thing is you look at your age and passes of time and you say, how long do I keep doing this? Yeah. Um, so what types of things do you read, do you watch, do you listen to, do you pray about to help you to maintain and sustain you when you're going through that part of this journey? Right. Well, I, I meditate a lot. I'm, a, I'm an avid reader, you know, and like I said, a lot of my stuff is uh, closely driven, so I'm always reading, uh, trying to find new angles and, and creative spins to, to, you know, I like to, uh, like to, like I said earlier, challenge people. So you said something real uh, critical right there, dealing with yourself. And I, and I deal with that and try to motivate myself to keep on pushing because um, uh, I did this show uh, in February for Black History Month. And uh, a lot of people, I get a lot of people who will tell me, man, I, I love what you do and this and that and the other, but when I look out, I don't see many of those people at my shows. You know, and, uh, mm -hmm. I know everyone has a life that we're living and mm -hmm. everyone's taking care of kids and trying to push forward family and things of that nature. So I try not to take it personally, but it's challenging. It's very challenging. So, mm -hmm. you know, I, like I said, I meditate. I'm a very spiritual person. Uh, I exercise and I just read a lot. Just keep on. Sure. I mean, because I, I feel strongly about, especially this character, Malcolm. Mm -hmm. I, I, he's mm -hmm. someone who... who made a great impact upon me in my yes, life, yes, especially during a time when I was really going, a troubled individual. Mm, and Malcolm mm -hmm. encouraged me to read and study. Right, you know, right, I was a young right. man who got kicked out of school yeah. but every year for right. a long time. Mm. You know, and, uh, and reading the autobiography of Malcolm X in mm -hmm. 1981, I believe it was, wow, wow. really encouraged me to read. And the more mm. I began to learn about him, the more I wanted to become better. Right, right, right. You know, and, right. and then, you know, I got into my, my spiritual my spirituality, and, and those are the things that just keep me moving and keep me doing what I do mm, because I, I feel like uh, I, I consider myself somewhat of a, a motivator, so I try to mm -hmm. motivate people, and I, I, I mentor as well. Wow, and big, so I try to especially motivate young people. Mm -hmm. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So, Danielle. Yeah. Okay, so, so and before I do, you had the opportunity to uh, work with uh, Omar Gooding, and uh, Jensen Atwood. So, what was the you know the the energy and the experience? How would you describe that? Uh, it, it was amazing, <laughs> and I would say it was probably probably the best filming experience ever because I was the most comfortable and the most prepared. Okay. And initially, I was extremely nervous because <laughs> at, at the time I wasn't familiar with Jensen. So when okay. Kim had posted the cast list on Facebook and social media, I was getting phone calls and Facebook messages <laughs> asking about Jensen, and people were all excited. And they were like, I used to watch him, and, you know, just his, some of his fans that were my Facebook friends. Right. And so then that made me nervous. <laughs> and he's just a really, really good-looking guy. So I was like, oh, my God, I'm, I'm a little <laughs> nervous about this whole thing. <laughs> Right. Can you guys hear me okay? Yeah, don't be nervous, Daniel. I'm a real good-looking <laughs> good guy, too. So, 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 so it's all right. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, I, I kept thinking, if we had, like, no chemistry or, you know, it just, because the, the whole movie, the foundation was based on our chemistry and our, our uh, you know, relationship in the film. And so I met him. It was the day before filming when we had a cast and crew meeting. And I was like, oh, my God, he's even better looking in person, right? So I was like, simmer down, simmer down, you know. <laughs> so after the meeting, I just, you know, started talking to him, asking him questions. And he really did me he was really a very kind and warm person. So after that, I was like, this is going to be fantastic. And it was, you know, when, when Omar and Drea and the other cast started coming in, you know, it was just fantastic. It, it really did feel like a family with all of us. Wow. So wow. I really enjoyed the experience. Wow. And that film has gone several places, right? Yeah, it it just came back from France. It was at the Pan African Film Festival. Ah. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, yep. 
It's been everywhere, Baltimore. It, it is going to be in Vegas. That's right. In August. Yes, yes, absolutely, absolutely. And that's going to be, you know, really powerful. I'm starting to get that pumped up right now. So, you know, that, you know, it's certain places, I think. And I asked him how she felt, uh, you know, just in terms of, I mean, depending upon where you're trying to take your craft to. But I asked him how does being in a, uh, a, a, uh, I guess close to Chicago, but, you know, which can be considered, a, you know, Roland, understand this conversation about your, your major markets for media communications. Uh, and uh, so how do you feel in terms of you being there or, you know, do you feel like that, that you're, you're, you know, that you could do better, say, in New York or or LA or even maybe Atlanta now with a lot of black people trying to create a black Hollywood in Atlanta. I see many people thinking about that. So what what, what would you say to that? You know what? I'm actually, actually contemplating moving. Okay. But the thing is, because you know right now I'm still working a nine to five job, but hmm. my, my thing is, I'm I guess am I willing to take that risk to move to Atlanta and try it there because it is a, it is a bigger market, but there are a lot of things going on down there. So oh. I feel like I do need to move. Really? To take it to the next level. Yeah, I do. I do. Mm. I feel like I need to move to take it to the next level. Yeah, yeah. But I'm a planner, so I'm scared to just be hasty, sell my house, and just like go, you know, <laughs> right. without a without a somewhat of a plan. Yeah, yeah. You definitely you know? have to have to have some semblance of. What you say, Roland? Why are you shaking your head? You telling her to just leave, just just get up and go? I'm saying. <laughs> Wait a minute, Roland, get ready. To I'm sick, sick I'm Daniel. saying, don't think, okay. don't think, jump. <laughs> don't think, jump. Just, just, just sell your house. Just, just, just go with it. You know, and and honestly, um, I mean, sometimes you know, and and I, as I was talking to the young brother in the Tupac film, he was telling me that uh, he got a, another opportunity to go to L.A. And he feel, I mean, he's he not going to stay there this time, but he's just, like, feeling that he need to go. He need to, mm -hmm. he, he feel like he need to do everything. Uh, well, he felt like he has done everything in Baltimore that he possibly, from being in the wire, it's like, that's, considered one of, the, uh, one of the biggest things that you're going to get in Baltimore. Uh, so, so yeah, yeah, I, I, I definitely can see, you know, this, or even if you, some people kind of travel, you know, just to, to make things happen, you know. So, well, let me ask you. So you said you did this in South Carolina. Have you, uh, Brother, yeah. Brother Derek, yeah. would, have you done, you know, or considering or trying to push into any other markets? I've thought about it. I mean, mm -hmm. when you get older, it, it gets a little more challenging. Right, it right, does, yeah. You know what yeah, I'm saying? I understand, I understand, and yeah. like I said, I, I was late into the perform, you know, in right. the acting game. I really was. Right. And I, I've done a few other things. I've done the Color Purple uh, a couple times. I've done a you know, oh, some okay. just put myself out there. And I've considered it, you know, cause, because my kids are, are, are grown now. Mm -hmm. And I always think, wow, if I got this bug back when I was... 20 or 19 but then again I was my, my mind was set for fighting I was a boxer right, and, right, and right. so I put all my my eggs in that basket and it didn't work out as I had planned so well you know what's his name uh, Morgan Freeman yeah yeah, so, yeah. him was it, or Samuel Jackson both of both them both of them, yeah. both of them. 46 kinda, and 52 yeah. <laughs> right so here's right, yeah. so, so the thing if you live to 130 you really didn't start late <laughs> yeah, that's true I mean, those, those cats uh, took right, up drama right. in school and stuff, I believe. Right. I think, uh, I think they did. Yeah. yeah, did they really? No, well, let, let me ask you, Danielle. So did you take any other, like, classes or what did you yeah. do? Mm -hmm. Besides being in your room looking at I Dream a Genie and looking in a mirror. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. what I, what, I did, what, did actually. Huh? I took an on-screen acting class. Okay. For a period of time, but I studied with an acting coach for almost two years. Wow! And it was okay. A, a woman. Her name is Julia. She she was very involved with the local theater community. 
Uh, and okay. I thought she was amazing, so I reached out. And, and you know what? After I did my second film, Jump In, I realized that I needed some help. Okay. You know, that I, I felt um, just that I could, I could use some help with character building, things like that. I just knew that I wasn't uh, operating, I guess, at 100%. So I reached out to her, and she really, really challenged me. And mm-hmm. I, I could say that this has really, preparing for roles has really, really made me uh, search out who I am, you know, because mm-hmm. while you're trying to figure out who this character is and what makes him tick, <laughs> it makes you yeah, ask no those same questions of yourself. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's wow. That's true. Mm-hmm. That's so true. That's a powerful statement. So indeed. True. Indeed. And, and you know, what's interesting, I'm, I'm hitting, I'm going to head to the Maryland Miami uh, Film Festival. Kim, you know, it's not that she told me to go, but, I, you know, I said that, uh, you know, and, and the reason that I'm interested just being a, a public speaker and, you know, attempting to understand audience participation and interaction, you know, I've gotten very, you know, interested, you know, and, and we actually I, uh, was responsible. We brought the film before I do. Daniel, oh, Daniel was supposed to have been there. <laughs> 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 but uh no no problem no problem but so we had uh kim and brother david who's the he was one of the um camera personnel uh okay. present so he came and uh some other individuals i think from in this area not okay. directly in the film okay. came uh, but uh i'm very interested in you know just like you said uh brother derek in terms of <laughs> knowing like it's just you uh, yeah. because I mean, there's no people people looking just at you yeah. when you when you're speaking. Yeah. You know, so I wanted to really get into understanding just that audience interaction, right. and you know, right. and 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 not just talking. Right. You know, but but using your whole yeah, body. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Right. I mean, I use music, okay. slides, and all that, and and like I said, you have to. The art of acting is not acting; it's being. You have to really transform yourself into the character that you're right. playing. So right. acting is not as simple as it seems. Mm-hmm. You know, and like the sister said, that's one of the things I'm in, in the process of now really trying to get some acting coaches because I, I feel like yeah. I've done a lot of, on my own, but I feel like I, I have so much more potential, untapped right. potential, right. 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 that I yes. haven't really tapped into yet because, see, I've, I've directed myself for so, so long. Okay. And I know I, can, I have nowhere near... Uh, maximize my potential wow, and I really wow. do believe in myself and we you know what's interesting you said you want to understand this side I'm I just jumped into the public uh, speaking field, okay right, you know right, and so right, yeah, so that's right, something right. that I've always uh, yeah. admired I just recently completed a uh, public speaking course uh, oh, wow. uh, a few months ago oh, and have me a, a public speaking uh, Engagement on Thursday. Oh wow! The guest that was just here, as a matter of fact. Oh, oh wow! Well, <laughs> Henry okay. Jones. Oh, no, 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 no. okay. Yeah. Oh, beautiful, beautiful, yeah. beautiful. Yes, yes, yes. So, uh, so Danielle. So, what else is? Uh, what What do you have on the horizon? Well, I just finished a couple of things. I just, a couple weeks ago I did a. a it's called Butt Ugly. It was a commercial. Uh, oh a right, yes. Campaign, but I also wrapped a film called Green, and the writer-director, his name is Keenan Daly. This young man is still uh, going to college in Champaign, but when I read this script, well, you know, actually, I met him at a film festival where, before I do a screening, and I was so impressed with him. Yes, he had a short film screening there as well. Mm-hmm. So he has posted something you know, a casting call, and so I reached out to him, and I was like, hey, you got a role for, you know, someone like me, and he sent me a little bit of the script, and, you know, I sent him my reel and everything like that, so he, he told me he kind of wrote this part with me in mind, so I read this script, and I was just amazed at the maturity of it, and mm. just how well written it is, but just for such a young person. Wow. But the character that I play, her name is Daria Jackson. Mm -hmm. Uh, She's someone that has suffered a lot of loss. And the young man that wrote it also stars in it. So he is my son-in-law in in this film. Mm. And my character is just a very nurturing person. And she's just kind of trying to help him find his way and and, uh, turn his life back around. Mm. So that should be... I know I think August is when he wants to 
be done with post production and start. Uh, so that's a not, that's a short film. film? No, it's a feature. It is a feature. Oh wow! Okay, okay, yes. okay. Oh, mm-hmm. beautiful, beautiful. So that's actually being shot there. It, I believe, it wrapped last Saturday. It, it was being <laughs> shot in Champaign. Oh Champaign, wow! Illinois. Wow! Mm-hmm. Okay. Oh, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. yeah so, uh, so brother Derek, so you have this coming up here, yes, sir. May the twentieth again. Everybody, that's going to be here at the E Life Media, at, well, Everlasting Life restaurant and mm-hmm. e-life media studio so maybe if we could get an interview with if you i'm not sure how where roland will be uh then or after fact or shoot a cut or the, the panel discussion at least okay. however part that, that you would like for us to to shoot so okay we okay. we you know however let, um, let me add this as well sure um, it's the one man show, but it also uh, will be African drumming, song, oh, poetry. Wow. Okay, and so thank you for that. That's the whole concept. Like I said, by any means, edutainment. Mm-hmm. And so all my shows are about, you know, it's not just my one man show. Right. But I really try to bring a pra- package that people can really come out okay. and feel like. I always feel good when people walk away and say, man, I, I learned a little something. Wow. And that's my wow. whole basis is walking people walking away, not just to feel good, but also feel like they, they gained something from it. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. And I, that's one of my goals is always to let, have people leaving like, wow, maybe an interesting. Experience. Experience, experience to want to. Experience, right. Like, for instance. And one, knowledge. Right, and knowledge. Like, right. see, for instance, what I've learned is a lot of people haven't even haven't read the autobiography. Right. And well, I tell people yes, all the time, yes, if yes. you haven't read the autobiography, come see my show. Because yes, my show yes, is based yes. on uh, Alex Haley's autobiography, right, so you'll see right. it uh, dramatized. The whole book is, is dramatized out, you know, by me. Oh, and wow. it's something that I'm very, very proud of. And, and I, wow. I always get encouraged when people say, uh, "You have influenced me to want to learn more about Malcolm." And that's the mm-hmm. whole basis of what I'm doing. Is it's really trying to get people more engaged in in this this American legend because that's what he is. Yes, yes, yes. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So. So Danielle, anything else you you did we cover everything? You feeling good? Anything you? I'm feeling fantastic. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Feeling okay. Fantastic. All right. So I just wanted to you know give you a chance to if anything else you want to add to this conversation, uh, uh, any questions or what do you uh, would like to leave the the listening audience in terms of well share if people were were starting. Or, you know, like even Brother Doug, I mean, not that he's starting, but, you know. uh, Trying to go to the next level. Yeah, trying (laughs) to go to the next level. Just kind of give him something that, that, you know, from here in this conversation, what what kind of things can he uh, begin to do in the listening audience as well? Well, number one, you have to believe in yourself. And also realize that there's nothing wrong with getting a coach or taking classes to step up your game, Mm -hmm. you know, and just surround yourself with positive people because there will be those naysayers that, (laughs) you know, say, get a real job or why are you doing this? (laughs) Um, But also, you have to make sure that you have a healthy dose of, that that you love yourself. Right. Because sometimes I think uh, people get into acting or things where they're going to be seen for for like validation and things like that. And if you don't get it and you don't have that self love for yourself, that could really do something to you. Mm. You know? Wow. So. Okay. Agree. Wow. Yep. All right. Well, so if anybody wanted to reach out for you, this is sister, uh, Danielle Ward. She was in several films, brothers and sisters, the life. I'm sorry. The, uh, this life ain't easy. Mm-hmm. Pretty. <laughs> this life. Oh, I keep saying this life. All right. Mm-hmm. This life ain't pretty. Uh, consumed. Mm-hmm. Consumed and before I do and several other yeah. films, but those were some of her key films that uh, she has been in. Uh, so, if anybody want to reach you, sister, for any uh, coaching or advice, or, you know, just to network, or to, mm-hmm. maybe when uh, Brother Dark's play is ready to jump off, I'm, he I'm may... I'm for you on Facebook. I heard you mention <laughs> Facebook. Yeah, she's definitely on that, so we'll, we'll make that happen. How how will people uh, reach you? By email, and my email address is danielle underscore dward at yahoo.com. Danielle is spelled D-A-N-I-E L L E underscore 
D W A R D at yahoo.com. Okay. All right. All right, Danielle. Well, we appreciate it. Thank you for, you know, calling in and hanging with us for an hour, sister. I appreciate that very much. We said we were going to make it happen and hope that you have enjoyed yourself. I have, and thank you so much for the opportunity. I was so nervous at first. But. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, All right, amazing. well, we well, did it right. So we much. did it right. Had somebody in here with you to, you know, make it flow. So, again, thank you again, and you enjoy the rest of your day. Good night, Daniel. All right. Thank you. Talk All right. to you later. All right. All right. All right. Now, so we got a little, little five more minutes here. So just to let everybody know, well, first let me mention Brother Roland Grimes here. He's going to be doing the, like, nothing you ever seen before, the, lo- the Roland Grimes traveling talk show live with musical guest Greg Boyer. And, my man. And, oh, oh, Red, oh yeah. Red, yes. <laughs> and Peloton. Peloton? Okay, all right, all right. And this is going to be at the Black Box Theater, Saturday, May the 13th, 4 p.m. Tickets are just $25, and that's 4185 Indian Head Highway in Indian Head, Maryland. All right, and you can go to the website, IndianHeadBlackBox.org, Indian Head, everybody should know how to spell that. <laughs> black box. Any head black box dot org for tickets. And that is uh this coming Saturday, uh May the thirteenth. Now is that somebody calling in? I guess so. Let's see who's calling in. Uh okay, you are live. Who's calling? I'm, I'm Reba. Good evening. Doctor Reba. Uh, hey Reba. How you doing? How are you? Fine, thank you. Oh, good, good, good. I'm glad you called in. Thank you. <laughs> oh, great, great, great. So we are still live here. Got Brother Derek here. Hey, Reba. How you doing this evening, Derek? I was trying to call you. Oh, <laughs> you okay. came through. That's oh. what I was trying to call you. I couldn't get in because I was on the line. I was calling in. Yes, yes, we had, we had our call-in guests here. That was wonderful. Uh, that was wonderful. Right, so hopefully you heard it. Anything you, you care to add to uh, Brother Derek's uh, conversation? Yes, I enjoyed everything this evening. I want to suggest to you all that Derek's program, when it's over, he has a question and answer session. Okay. And he's still in character with Malcolm X. Right. And it really makes a very interesting exchange with the audience because they're, wow. they're, they're spellbound by his presentation. Wow. And, and I, I keep saying his show is going to be Broadway bound. Okay. But it's good. <laughs> wow. But his, uh, his presentation... Once you see it, you're going to love it. And when the question and answer period comes, it'll be very, very interesting, the questions that we generated. Yes, yes. Okay, all right. Sounds good. Well, I'm looking forward to that. All right. Do you want to say Thank anything? Thank you, Reba. Thank you. Well, you're certainly welcome May 20. Yes. And there'll be vendors there as well. So it should be a very interesting evening of conversation and interacting and networking. And Brother Haki will be there with his books as well. Yes, yes, yes. So it should be very wonderful to have the time before the program begins and the drumming and the performance. It's going to be wonderful. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Sounds good. So thank you. Thank you, thank Dr. You. Reba. Have Appreciate that. All right. All right. Good night, Reba. Bye-bye, Derek. Bye-bye, All right. I'll talk to you later. All right. Bye-bye. All right. So, again, that's Saturday. And just to let everybody know, on Sunday, the following day, uh, you know, we have uh, uh, Dr. Jared Ball and uh, Brother Dr. Mark Bowden. They will have a discussion. I'll be moderating that. That's in Baltimore at Terra Cafe uh, in Baltimore, and that is tickets to $20. We're going to honor actually two elders with the Malcolm X Legacy Award, uh, Brother Lou Fields and Mama, Mother Nzinga, Mama Nzinga uh, in Baltimore. So, uh, you know, I, you know, we got to... Though with the Malcolm X Legacy Award, that's what we're giving to of our community elders out of Baltimore. So that's Sunday at Terra Cafe for those that are aware of Terra Cafe in Baltimore. It's the spot now in Baltimore. So, man, so we got Power Pack Weekend coming up, oh, yeah. Brother Derek. Oh, yeah. So I'm looking Question. forward to, you know, getting more knowledge about Malcolm X and things I didn't know and, you know, see it perform. I mean, like I said, when I... I went to that uh, the Bowie play, man. I want you to look that up. It was oh, no question. Malcolm, it was it was called Betty Shabazz versus the Nation, 
it was it was very instant. It was very instant. So I'm I, and I still had the gentleman's card uh, okay. for that. So um, but definitely, brother Roland. We're good, man. Yeah, all yeah. Right. <laughs> so thank you, you all for tuning in, listening in. And my battery is about to die on my laptop anyway, so we are good to go. So thank you, brother right, Doug. Look forward. We shall it. talk, brother. Peace. All right. All right, everybody. Till next week. We will be back next week. We are out. Ladies and gentlemen, coming at you this Saturday, May 13th, at the Indian Head Center for the Arts, Black Box Theater, none other than your boy, Rolling Bubba Grimes, Rolling Grimes Show Live on stage, 4 o'clock p.m., Saturday, May 13th. And with me, I have my good friend and band leader for this special event, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Greg Boyer. Greg, man, look, you played at the Black Box Theater not too long ago. Tell us about that experience, man. Well, it's good to return home. You know, all the roads lead to home, and all the stuff I did led me right back to Indian Head that particular night. And the love, the atmosphere was beyond description, along with a few other little backstories that went on that night uh, with some guys I went to school with and, and it was just a great night to play music and, and be back and just show everybody how proud I am to be from where I am. That place was very intimate. It was a hundred people but they were right up on you. And you play a big arena with the lights and everything being what they are. You can only see past the first ten rows. Everything past that is a shadow. So it's very different playing in an intimate setting such as Black Box Theater and I really love it because I feel like I'm playing for everybody in the room as opposed to being just a job where I'm performing. And the great part about it is everybody in the theater can hear and see real well. Yeah. So they're right up on you because we are right up uh, on you. Right up on you and I knew everybody in there well, almost anyway but you know a lot of those people I hadn't seen in 20, 30, 40 years and it was good to bring it all back home. I really felt like that night was special for me and I, I would venture to say everybody in attendance. Saturday, May 13th, 4 o'clock p.m. Greg Boyer is going to accompany Roland Grimes' show on stage. As Greg Boyer actually was part of the very first set of the Roland Grimes show live. Uh, it was at a dinner theater. It was at a dinner theater in Upper Marlboro. Greg doesn't remember. <laughs> yeah, I remember, man. Uh, we had a great I time. was a, a nervous wreck, not having done that kind of thing before. You know, my thing is playing trombone, so to go in there and speak about topics, but man, know, all I had to do was just speak my mind and put it all out there, and, and not worry about being wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about that experience, man. When you walked away from it, how'd you feel? I felt like I could do this, but I also felt like I need to learn a little bit more about this particular uh, idiom of entertainment and information. And one of the things you can't go in there is not having done your work.